Welcome back to the channel. In this mini series, I'm showing you how I built this edition and all the things I did differently from conventional North American construction. Today's gonna get a bit nerdy. Today is going to get a bit nerdy and I'm going to go exactly into the different layers of the walls, of the floor and of the roof and why I did it this way and why I built backwards. Let's get it going! As I'm editing this video, I realize I need to do a quick preface. I'm sorry for all the jump cuts and the weird edits and the weird words that I sometimes use. Today's topic I'm really passionate about. It's all about building healthy and energy efficient buildings and the wall buildup is part of it. It's just not that easy to explain and therefore I have lots of weird jump cuts and some weird words. I'm truly sorry about it. I hope you still enjoy this video, but it is geeky. Let's start with the wall. I do have a model here. I've already shown you all the different materials I used in a previous episode, but today we're gonna to go specifically into the different layers. So just for the orientation to make sure that you understand what's going on here, this is the outside, this is the strapping. I have wood fiber board here, two by six with cellulose insulation, and then a OSB sheet or plywood sheet and a service cavity. This mock-up is a bit different than what I actually did in this edition. I only used two by twos on the inside and not a full two by four. This is just a mock-up that I have and how I would suggest building an entire house at minimum. Now here is where it gets interesting. In heating dominated climate, there's two rules. The vapor control layer needs to be placed on the inside and the outside needs to be roughly 10 times more vapor open than the inside. Ideally, a little bit more than that as well. Why is that? Well, in the winter, warm, moist air wants to move towards the outside. That desire to move outside is called vapor pressure drive. The warm air from the inside carries moisture with it. If that moisture hits a cold, non-vapor open material, such as OSB, plywood, or maybe foam, it can condense to water, and over time that leads to mold and potentially rot. To avoid this, the wall needs to let vapor escape to the outside. Building Science has a rule of thumb. Your exterior needs to be 10 times more vapor open than the interior. That way, moisture slowly dries out without getting trapped, so what we're essentially building here is a Gore-Tex jacket that allows moisture to go outside, but not water to get in. And I'm being very specific to mention that this is for heating dominated climate. Up here in Canada, for the main part, we're dealing with a heating load on our buildings. Yes, the vapor pressure drive can be turned around in the summer for, let's say, a duration of two to three months but it is not as much as in the winter. So for instance, in the summer, if we were having a heat snap, let's say 40 degrees, just for the sake of the argument, we would have a vapor pressure drive from the outside inward, where we can have upwards of 15 degrees difference between the inside and the outside. But that's only going to be during the day. And then if we look at what temperature differences we have during the winter, we're going to have very consistently temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius and below. Um, but even on the warmer days, the pressure drive always goes from the inside to the outside. On a very cold winter snap, we would have easily a temperature differential of minus 30 degrees from the inside to the outside for quite a long time as well. So I'm just making sure this is climate specific, and we definitely have more time during the year where our vapor pressure drive, and therefore also the moisture is driving from the inside to the outside, rather than from the outside going in. With this wall buildup, even the other direction isn't going to be an issue. I hope that made sense. Building signs intermission. 
I wanted to make sure that you understand what is happening on a molecular level inside the wall. And so I'm going to use a few items here to demonstrate really what's going on. Hopefully someday down the road, I can actually build this into a real model and I'll just hold up materials awkwardly. Anyways, I have a chicken wire mesh here that represents the OSB in the wall. And I have a chain link fence that represents the wood fiber board. I'm also using a tennis ball, which represents water in liquid form. Multiple molecules are stuck together, so they're bigger. And then I have a golf ball, which represents water in vapor form. The molecules, water molecules are much smaller. So what can happen with water in vapor form? It can actually pass right through the wood fiber board represented by the chain link fence here. Whereas it can't pass through the chicken wire. In reality, it's not quite that simple because it still does passes through, just not as fast. But I'm just trying to illustrate here that on the inside, the water vapor is being held up by the OSB or the vapor control layer. It could be OSB, it can be plywood, it can be uh, a membrane. It's being held up by that. But any moisture stuck in the wall can pass right through the wood fiber board. On the flip side, if you have water in liquid form, it doesn't pass through it. It actually runs down it. So if you're having water on the outside of the facade hitting this material, it can run through it, right down it. The wood fiber board most of the time has a paraffin or a wax finish or wax coating to it as well. And that leads to the bigger water molecules that are sticking together to just run down it. So I hope this illustration shows you a little bit more what is going on with the different layers in the wall and the water molecules. The one thing that throws inspectors a little bit of a loop is this is not a membrane as what they would usually want to see. And it's not all the way at the inside face of the, the drywall. It's specifically done this way so that I can't accidentally um, put screws or nails in there and then create a hole where moist air can really flow through much, much easier. The one rule in the OBC is that this layer shall be placed in a location where it does not create condensation, which is not necessarily on the inside face. Generally, we'd say no more than 25% inward. But if you want to be really exact, you run this through a simulator to find out whether or not you're gonna have condensation there. Some of the buildups that are most prone to condensation in the walls are the ones that don't consider this. So let's say you're placing a very vapor tight foam and maybe on top of it, an OSB sheet on the outside and then don't match that up correctly. Let's say you're using a membrane that has a fairly high US PERMS rating, meaning that it allows moisture to go in. Then as it gets more to the outside, it cools down, hits that condensing surface and that's where it can turn into water. One way to solve that is to use a smart membrane on the inside that also allows drying to the inside, but on colder months closes down and doesn't allow that to the inside. It's a bit more high tech and I decided I really don't need to use that here because of the wood fiber board. So in order to make this all work, I use 60 millimeters of Agapan THD on the outside here, which is very, very open. I wanted to keep this a continuous layer, and so I carry that up and over the, the roof as well, which is really the method that Matt Reisinger sometimes calls the Monopoly house. So it's really one continuous layer over top, back down to the walls. I didn't continue it on in the floor because it wasn't necessary. And it was quite tricky because I kept the roof on. I now needed to build the roof top side down. The old two by four rafters I kept and they now became my rain screen. Then I mounted Agapan THD to the underside of that. And then I put the uh, wood eye joists underneath it. Then I put plywood on the inside and taped that up. And that was the buildup. One really nice thing about this build up here is that it's very 
sturdy and it holds in the cellulose, which I can now dense pack in with the proper blower. All right, and so how did I finish it out on the outside? I actually used a UV resistant membrane called Siga MyVest 700 SOB to protect this one because I used open joints on the facade which allow uh, sunlight uh, in certain areas to come through. The design of the rain screen really helped shed water away. Also the joints are positive, meaning that the, um, the membrane that comes from above layers over top of the one from underneath. So even by design, water just sheds down. It's a very simple and bulletproof system. By the way, Siga MyVest 700 SOB. I know what you guys are all thinking. SOB stands for Siga on board, okay? That means the tape is integrated into the membrane so that you don't have to tape over the joint and create negative laps, but I know what you're thinking. One of the concerns that many people have when using such a system with open joints is that insects could potentially settle in here. The strapping is always done vertically so that air can move through it. And because the outside rain screen actually heats up, it creates air movement through there, which is not really uh, an environment that insects like. This edition has now been up for over four years and I've had no insects problems in there. I really wanted to test it here. This was one of those concerns that I hear often and I wanted to use this building as a demonstration that it works. So far it's worked. One more note on the roof. I build the same buildup with the THD and cellulose in the cavity of the TGI beams. The OBC does want a rain screen or a ventilation area that is a minimum of 63 millimeters, which is actually a two by three standing on a side. Since the, the existing roof was made of two by fours, and I believe it's true two by fours, so four inches, that was more than enough to create the ventilation. Uh, it was just important that I connected it at the bottom. I put a screening across it so that it prevents insects to get in there as much as I can. And then at the top, I also created a fairly complex ridge cap so that air could escape out there. Those are the rules set out by the OVC and then everything worked just fine. Here's what I did for the floor. It's actually technically the same buildup, except for the different orientation. It still has the same vapor requirement or the same vapor behavior where it drives from the inside and the warm side towards the outside. I don't need the surface cavity anymore. So that is now gone. This is now my subfloor. Then this is a, an 11 7 8 or 12 inch wood eye joist. And at the bottom, rather than using a 60 millimeter Agepan THD, I used a product called Agepan DWD, which is just as vapor open. I wanted to make sure that there was no problems with moisture rising through the ground. And so I consulted with the application engineers at SEGA and we decided to add a layer of self-adhered MyVest 500SA to it, just to be sure. But the deck is also raised about four to six inches off the ground, so air can freely move underneath there and anything can dry out. There really is going to be so little moisture in the ground because it's all covered through the addition that there's going to be very little concern about rising moisture. The cool part is that I was excited about building it and how to build it. I was building this on my own in 2020 during the lockout. So I decided to build it standing up. So it essentially looks like a wall. And then I sheathed it from one side with Agipan DWD. And then I later laid it down, attached it to the house. All I still needed to do at this point was to install the ductworks for the forced air heating and cooling system and then I was able to put the subfloor down on it. And in the end, I dense filled the cellulose right into the floor cavities. Okay, so that was the details about the building physics in the wall layers. What do you think about it? Would you have built it that way? After about four years of living in the space and using it as my home office, I can say it works just as I intended. It's warm in the winter, it's cold in the summer. It does not consume any more energy than the rest of the house. Actually, the funny part is 
even though I've enclosed the space here, it's actually more energy efficient than the previous wall that it replaced. So I think the proof is in the pudding right there. Leave a comment down below of what you would have done differently. Do you agree with this or is there maybe some concerns that you have? I'd welcome any comments, always up for any good discussions. Next week, I'm going to go into why I use cellulose. I'm a big fan of cellulose and I just wanna show you a few things about how to install it and some more details about it. If you don't wanna miss it, hit the subscribe button and see you next week.